<coughs> oh my god What's up guys? Hope everyone's having a great day today. Today we have an interview with a national champion coach of the year in the of the ITAs, Chase Hodges from Georgia Gwinnett. He is one of the all-time greatest coaches I believe in the NAIA maybe in college of all time. So I hope you guys do enjoy this interview with him. If you wanna check out their social medias and more about their program, I'll leave the links to their socials in the description below as well as their website. If you guys are new to the channel and you wanna see more, make sure to leave a big like on this video as well as making sure you subscribe to Tweenerhead Tennis. I hope you guys do enjoy this interview. Thanks guys. What's up Tweenerheads? Welcome back to another Tweenerhead Tennis interview. Today I have head coach of Georgia Gwinnett College here with Chase Hodges. How are you doing Chase? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Do, you no problem. Thanks for talking to us. Chase is an 11-time NAIA National Champion, 7-time ITA National Coach of the Year, and 11-time NAIA National Coach of the Year. I mean, how did you, to start off, how did you first get into college coaching? Well, that's a great question, uh, Philip. You know, I started in uh, 1998. I graduated from uh, UNC Wilmington. Uh, How did you how did you feel at twenty five running an entire program essentially? Yeah. It's yeah, it was, uh, that's scary. Yeah. Did a lot of the kids on the team at the time not really, did you feel like you were a head coach or did you feel like you were still on a college tennis team? And I, I actually took my first volunteer assistant job this year, and at 23, it's like I still feel like you're in college. And to keep that mindset of or being separate from, instead of you have to relate to them but also act in the role that you have. Uh, next 
job at, at UNC Asheville, which was a Division One school in, in Asheville, North Carolina. And, you know, that was back in 2002. So, um, you know, it, it prepared me for the next gig, and you know, it's it, it was an opportunity. I'll always be thankful to to Longwood for you know giving a chance on a 25 year old. So, you know, kudos to, to them. Honestly, really, and. And you've turned out to be one one of the best coaches in the NAIA history, really, because it, you started in 2013, and from honestly 2015 to 2019, you've only lost three matches for the men's program. I. You've done your homework here. You've done your homework. <laughs> uh, that's impressive. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've been on quite a run. Um, how do you, you just know, go, go? How do you describe that? How would you, if you were to put your, if you were to sum up the way you coach at this school, what would, what comes to mind? Well, we've been, you know, Philip, we've been on quite a run. I mean, we've won 109 matches in a row. Uh, currently, that's the longest win streak in all of college athletics. Um, so we've, we haven't lost a match since 2015 on the men's side. So, uh, you know, it's, we're going on four years now. Going undefeated, and as you know, you know, only one team every year actually wins their last match if you consider postseason to play. Um, <laughs> so we've been real fortunate to uh, to win six straight national championships on the men's side, and, and the women have won five national championships. So uh, you know, it's a situation now where I think that you know the mindset that we have is uh, pretty evident in our players. You know, we feel that. We have one of the best college tennis programs in all of college tennis, not just the AI. We feel, we feel that strongly about our game. And, uh, you know, that type of mentality is, you know, just confidence and believing in yourself. And, uh, you know, we got a group of players that, regardless of, of who they are, because we've graduated a lot of great players and, you know, had some, you know, just an influx of new players throughout the years. But I feel that the, the tradition that we build is uh, is one where when you come to Georgia Gwinnett, you expect to win national titles and, and win matches, and you know, obviously we want to do it the right way. And uh, you know, we just got a, a group of guys that really buy into to what I'm preaching and the coaching staff preaches, and you know, it's turned out to be a, a big big time success. Do you think that puts more I'm pressure? Lucky. I feel lucky. I feel lucky to be a part of it. <laughs> I would be too. I mean, yeah. do you yeah. think it's more, do you think it provides more pressure for the players to keep this up? Because I remember I saw it, yeah. I saw it for the first time on Twitter, and when I read that you guys won that many matches in a row, I, I honestly couldn't believe it. And yeah. Yeah. it's, yeah. how do you, what's that like to constantly be under the limelight of, all right, are we going to lose this one? Are we going to lose this one? talk about it or we could embrace it 
It's unbelievable how that has happened to you and how you've been able to coach this team consistently to win. And I, one thing that comes to my mind when this ha uh, with this winning streak of yours is when the UConn women basketball, when their crazy streak ended of unbeaten run came to an end, the camera turns to Gina Oriyama and kind of smiles, and it seems like the world's lifted off his shoulders once his winning streak ended because it means right. that they're human. Is, right. is there anything, does it feel like you have that weight on your shoulders a little bit or is it you kind of relax knowing that you've already had so much success that you really have nothing to prove? That's a great question. And I definitely think you guys can do it with the way your program's going and the way you're coaching. It's in no problem. And I think the next question I would like to ask you is, when you first decided to coach NAIA tennis, what was that transition like to go from conferences that people know and schools that you play are more well-known to a conference that not many people are used to? Titles is what 
tribute to George Gwinnett and you know Darren Wilson, the, the athletic director who hired me back in 2012. He's, he's still the athletic director of George Gwinnett. Did a great job selling the vision of the program and the vision of the athletic department and the school. And you know, it's it's one of those where everything has kind of come true. You know, it's. Uh, fastest growing college, one of the fastest growing colleges in the United States, uh, you know, with over 13,000 students now, it's the largest, the largest NAI school in the country, so it's, uh, you know, the only four-year college in Gwinnett County, which is over a million residents, is Georgia Gwinnett, so, you know, it's a, uh, it's a school that's definitely on the rise, and I think over time, a lot of people outside of just the tennis community are going to be hearing a lot about Georgia Gwinnett. And I think a lot of people should know about you guys because from this standpoint, from the NAIA, you guys can compete with D1, D2, D3. So what makes you recruit kids from going to a small Division One or going to a big D3 to come to an NAIA, NAIA school? Yeah, I mean, well, we sell it in a number of ways. Back when you know when, when the UCR was doing the Power Six, you know they had us in that ten to fifteen range for any school in the country based on UCR. Based you know top fifteen in the country, we would be, we would be D one. So you know we looked at it like this. I mean, if you want to come play for a for a school where tennis is truly treated, you know we only have six sports: men and women's tennis, men and women's soccer, baseball, and softball. So you know, we put a large emphasis on tennis, um, which we feel that we're in the minority from that standpoint. Uh, you know, we also feel that, you know, if you have ambitions to play professional, um, when you finish, uh, we can give you the, the training ground to get there on the men and women's side. Um, and we also feel that, you know, players that truly want to come be a part of what we're building and, you know, the dynasty that we've set up, you know, if you want to come win some national titles, then what better place to come? And be in Atlanta with a beautiful facility. We got a 16 core facility with player locker rooms, lounge. You know, we have everything you need uh, to be successful. So, um, you know, I feel like the recruiting pitch is the same for each player that we have, um, regardless of division, whether it's D1, D2, D3, AI, JUCO. We feel like if you're coming to play for us, you're going to be playing for the elite. In, in college tennis, and uh, you know, we don't really sell our program um, as an NAI program. We just sell it as a general college tennis program. And uh, you know, if you want to be a part of that, then you know, we'd love to have you. I I love it, and I think a lot of yeah. people. I've heard actually when I was in Atlanta that D one schools are afraid to play you because you'll probably blow them out. <laughs> well, I mean, we we've had the opportunity to play. Uh, quite a few D1s, and, uh, you know, we've had success with posting, you know, numerous wins, but, you know, we're, like I said, I mean, we're, we'll play anybody, you know, we want to play anybody, uh, regardless of division, you know, if they want to play us, and you know, I think it's a, a win-win for both parties, you know, and it's an opportunity for us to play the best in college tennis, and it's an opportunity for them to, to try to end this streak, so it's a, it's a win-win for both. And would you, has anyone from your program tried to go pro or is going pro currently? Yeah. Well, we have, we had a player called Jordan Cox who played for us for four years. Uh, he, he got up to about 400 ATP, mm -hmm. um, who, who was a phenomenal player for us, American player. And currently we have uh, Kevin Federak who, who won three Super Bowls, who's actually the coach of Guido Pella, who's 20 in the world, ATP right now. Oh, wow. Um, he's his coach. So, you know, those are recent Grizzlies. And then we have another influx of players that are currently trying to battle their way on the Challengers Tour. But, you know, the hope is that it's a matter of time before we can see a, see a Grizzly playing at the U.S. Open, like you saw with, with the, the kid from Tulane. Uh, Dominic Kupfer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that was amazing. So, mm -hmm. You know, I think in general, college tennis, as you know, is really starting to make some major headway in the pro mm -hmm. game. And, you know, we're, we're looking forward to, to providing future players to, to make that happen. 
do you do you encourage them to go pro or do you excuse me yeah i mean i think that i, th- I think that you know, the number one thing that i encourage is obviously for them to get a degree um and then once they get their degree um encouraging them to to give the tour a, a shot i mean i think it's a uh, much better opportunity when you have a degree in hand to go out there and, and try to grind your way to, to making a living on tour. Um, so getting that degree is the first priority, and then getting them out there to to see you know where they currently are. And uh, you know I think we have a couple players that are uh, playing for their respective Davis Cup teams that have played for GGC who um, are looking to take that next step and. Uh, you know, I definitely encourage it, but primarily it would be after they get their four-year degree so they have something to fall back on mm-hmm. and they're not in a position where, you know, it's all or nothing, you know. Does the does the NAIA have the similar rules that the NCAA has when it comes to playing pro while in college, or is it uh, different? Well, the biggest difference is um, in the NCAA, you have six months after you graduate high school. Um, to basically determine what you're going to do. Um, okay. Whereas the NAI gives the NAI gives you a full year. So. Oh wow. Um, you know, if, yeah. So you have a full year after you finish high school to really determine what you want to do, and then you know, kind of go from there. So you know, the rules it's, it's basically uh, a six month addition uh, for the NAI. But other than that, I mean, it's you know, just like the NCAA, there's a NAI Clearinghouse, NAI Eligibility Center. Um, you still have to make sure that you're, you know, following all the all the eligibility rules in order to get your players eligible. So um, it's very similar uh, with the NCAA, other than the um, amount of time after graduation. Okay, I think yeah. I've always thought that, in my opinion, I thought the NAIA could. When you yeah, recruit, of, you can recruit yeah. m- maybe older players that graduated right. later, is that correct? Yeah, I mean, you do have some older players that, uh, you know, maybe, um, you know, maybe they finished high school later or, or whatever scenario it may be. But, you know, really, to be quite honest with you, the NCAA D1, D2, NAI, you know, now that, you know, the eligibility center and, and all that is involved, it's, a, it's pretty similar. I mean, there are... You know some differences, but you know all in all, you know it's it's an opportunity for people who have finished high school um, to get an opportunity to play collegiate sports. And you know, that's one thing about that's great about the NAI is the NAI is really becoming more and more popular with a lot of kids that I'm speaking to in terms of recruits because I think they're starting to realize that you know regardless of their eligibility standpoint with the NCAA. You know, the NAI can provide a phenomenal collegiate experience. And, you know, a lot of times we're the only program in the NAI that gets talked about in tennis. But it, trust me, there's a there's a, a lot of good programs out there that, you know, we've been fortunate, fortunate enough to, 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 to beat, but it's, it hasn't been easy. Um, you know, there's been a lot of phenomenal programs that um, continue to get better. And, uh, you know, we need to be ready to, to take all of them on for sure. Well, Chase, I really appreciate you sitting down and talking to us, especially at this hour. Uh, that, was Ch- that was Chase Hosses from Georgia Gwinnett. I really appreciate you sitting down and talking to us. Thanks, Chase. Hey, thank you very much. And good luck at the rest of the season. Hey, thanks a lot. No problem. All right.